has one 12 volt battery on the front of the trailer, two 20 pound propane cylinders that are full, except for what they use to service the trailer. The arrow on the regulator is pointed at this bottle over here. It's green inside the eye. Once this bottle over here would come empty, it's going to turn red, indicating that the bottle is pointed to is empty. Then all you have to do is push it over to that one, take this one off, and take it to town and have it refilled. On the bottle cover, there is two tabs on the bottom, and you can put a bungee cord underneath the bottle rack. Quick disconnect at the top so you don't have to take the cover off every time. On the electric jack, it has an on and off light on front, up and down switch, it has a manual override up on top. But before I have to do the manual override, I always go to the fusible link here on the side and check it first. But there is a handle to manually crank that up or down. It is prepped for a solar panel that will recharge the battery on the front of the trailer. This side over here, the handle for the front tongue jack to manually crank it up or down. It has two-way lights. The other two handles are on the other side, so I'll wait and talk about them when we get over there. The first termination valve is for the kitchen sink water only. There is a port spray hose in the trailer that connects to this like an air hose does. Gives you cold water on this side of the trailer. Then you have your city water connect that you can hook to with a water hose and regulator. And then you have your black tank flush for when you're dumping your black tank here in the back. You can hook a water hose and regulator to that. Turn water pressure onto it. It's got a little aerator that spins around. Helps kind of clean out more of the nasty debris out of the toilet. Then you have your park cable hookup and your satellite hookup. If the park that you're at has cable, you can hook to their cable, and you'll have cable that they have on your TV. If you buy the satellite dish that sits out beside the trailer, you'll have the TV channels that your satellite dish will pick up. Lug nuts on the trailer have been torqued at 100 foot-pounds. Tires are aired after pressure, which is 65 pounds on the side of the tire cold. In the back, you have a termination valve that is your toilet water. This is your power cord, it's 35 foot long, it's a 50 amp service, it does have a spare tire on the back of the vehicle. Before we walk too far away, I want to show you this jack here in the back. If for any reason it won't go up or down on its own, it does have a manual handle that will crank the jacks up or down. backup camera. It does have a spare tire on the back of it. It's not been torqued on. It's been put on with a wrench. Electric switch over here on this side to extend the stabilizing jacks down. Here again, for any reason, they won't go up or down by the electric switch here on the side. There is a manual way to crank them on the opposite side of the trailer. It does have the outside kitchenette, which has a refrigerator. Controls for the refrigerator on the outside are in the upper right hand corner. And it is electric only on the outside. Here's your port spray hose that you'll use on the off door side of the trailer for cold water only. Then you have an outside sink that has hot and cold running water on it. And you also have an outside grill. Grill pulls out, locks into place, has a gas line on the back of it that comes around and meets the connection underneath the trailer. Once they're connected, it does have a T-valve on the brass fitting that has to be turned in line with the gas line 
for it to have gas coming through the grill. The lid on the grill's got to be turned upside down because it wasn't fitting in the cabinet. But it just comes out and flips upside down on top here. It does have a built-in striker on your knob that clicks, lights it. Usually takes about three clicks before it actually will light the outside grill. Then you have your grease pan to capture the grease coming off of it. Here again, we're going to unpin it. Put the gas line up in behind. Slide it back into position and repin it up here in the front. While we're here, there is a brass colored handle up front with the T slot in it that will actually go through the rubber grommet on this side over here and will retract the bunk slide in or out for any reason it won't go on the switch. It does have a set of steps for the back door that enters into your bathroom. It does have a 110 outlet on the outside of the trailer that is protected by the GFI outlet in the bathroom. Outside of the furnace, sucks cold air in the top, hot air out the bottom. I always suggest putting the mud diver screen over that too once it's been lit on propane. Mud divers love that smell and they'll come in there and try to build their little dirt nest. Then we have the stove vent up here at the top. The flapper has to be loose on it to allow smoke to come from inside the trailer out. Then you have your two outside speakers. I'll have to show you more about them when we get to the inside of the stereo. But right down below here, there is two low water drain points. The red side is the hot side of the water system. The blue side is the cold side of the water system. You'll use those for winterizing and dewinterizing of the trailer. The one right in front of that is your freshwater tank drain. To drain the freshwater tank, that valve has to be in the inline position. Outside of the hot water heater is next. Hot water heater works two ways, propane and 110. Before you operate either one of them, you'll want to pop the top off valve and make sure you have water coming out of the top of it. The electric switch is in the lower left hand corner. And the gas switch is going to be on your monitor panel on the inside of the unit. While we're here, we're going to look at the anode rod. The anode rod is where you'll drain the hot water heater for winterizing and dewinterizing and in between trips. An anode rod actually draws all the impurities to that rod, eats up the rod instead of eating up the inside of the tank. But that is where you'll drain the hot water heater. I'll have to show you the gas switch when we get to the inside of the monitor panel. Fresh water tank fills here. Drains at the white connection at the front. Another hole inside the trailer that will manually crank the living room slide in or out for any reason it won't work on its own. Jack switch here in the front to lower the stabilizer jacks in the front. Two more handles in the trailer. This one here will actually do the spare tire. The little brass colored ones will do the two balance jacks on the front and back of the trailer and both of your slide room fittings. It does have a metal tray that will slide up to the outside of the trailer for your more heavy supplies. It does have a two way light on this side over here. One way you turn it's motion sensor, the other way you turn it, it's on 24-7. And the fusible link that is right here in front of the trailer is for your LED lights on the front of the trailer. Not too bad on the outside, we're going to go to the inside. We're going to have the trailer on the site level from side to side, front to back. The next thing is the proper fit of the steps. We're going to open the door all the way up. We're going to grab a hold of the little blue handle here, pulls it out. There is adjustments on either one of the legs at the bottom. The main thing is it has to lay flat in the threshold for the proper fit over the door. To achieve that, you'll push the little button on the back of it and adjust your legs accordingly. 
Now as we step into the trailer, it does have a working fire extinguisher. We're going to run the slide rings out. First button runs the first slide out. You always want to make sure there's not another trailer pulled up along the back side of you or a tree. The second one runs the bunk slide out. Here again, you want to make sure there's not a tree in that area. And then this one here will actually extend the awning out. I'd like to roll it back up and let the tail skirt hang down. Then it also has the LED lights up underneath the edge of the canvas. Each one of the arms has a pitch point that you can pull down against, putting the pitch of the rain coming off of this corner here. Front arm has the same arm on it that will put the pitch going off towards the front. Me, myself, I kind of like to have it away from the front door. Here again, you got a pitch point on the front arm that pulls it down to put the rain coming off this corner over here. Now we'll go back to the inside and we'll finish up with the monitor panel. On the monitor panel, if you check the battery life, it's going to show you fully charged. To get an accurate reading of the battery, have the 110 line unplugged from the trailer and then push the battery button. Your freshwater tank, as it fills up, it'll show one third, two thirds full. Once it hits full, I turn the water pressure off going to the tank. Black tank is your toilet water. Gray tank is your bathroom sink and shower and your kitchen sink water. There's no auxiliary tank on the trailer. First blue button turns your water pump on between the fresh water tank and the faucets. The second blue button turns your hot water heater on LP. As soon as you turn the blue light on, the little red light comes on. About a minute's time, the red light will go off. Then it goes through two lighting processes to light on gas. For any reason it does not light on gas, it'll come right back on. Third blue light is the cabin lights going through the center of the trailer. Down here at the bottom, the first blue light is the two LED strips on the cap of the trailer on the front. Your second one is your awning lights that are underneath the awning. And your third one is your auxiliary, which will be a light underneath the steps. You also have a battery disconnect on the trailer. For the battery disconnect to be working, the tab has to be pulled out. If it's pushed back in, it's not recharging your battery. It does have a working LP detector and carbon monoxide detector in the trailer. All the rest of the lights in the trailer have to be turned on by hand. That'll wake you up, won't it? All the rest of the lights in the trailer have to be turned on by hand. You do have a 110 outlet up underneath the kitchen sink. Top drawer should have the two sets of keys. The purple key does both front and back door locks and dead bolts. The middle sized remote is for the stereo. The bigger remote is for the TV only. All the rest of the paperwork I found in the trailer is in this bottom drawer. Microwave, the only thing I can really tell you about the microwave is it does have a clock button on the front. Let's say it's 1030. And then hit the clock button in the center to the two center eyes is flashing. The only reason I set the time on the microwave is I can tell if the trailer's lost 110 power coming to it. Here again, you do have a light for the stove top 
and a fan. For the fan to work properly, the two tabs have to be lifted on the outside and allows the flapper to flap. On the glass stove top, it will fold up two times, up out of the way. Button on the far right hand side turns your little blue lights on the knobs. Turn to the highlight position, the lights should turn red. And I don't think I turn the gas bottles on the front. In fact, I know I do. On the oven, you have to turn to the pilot on position and hold down on the button. Using the same striker that lights the three burners on top, we'll light the oven too. You don't have to use a long lighter or match anymore. The button on the right hand side, if you turn it down, also gives you light inside the oven. On the refrigerator, it has an on and off button. It is a Norco 12 volt refrigerator. So when you come over here and you push the button for the refrigerator part, it tells you the temperature, which you can dial up or down by pushing the other buttons. If you check the freezer temperature, it gives you that temperature to change to, and you can dial it up or down to match whatever you want it to. If you want it to actually freeze your water in top, but not freeze your water in the bottom. Right below the refrigerator is your breaker box with your 50 amp main in the center. Your first two 15 outlets are GFI and receptacles. Microwave, AC, your main, your second AC, hot water heater, converter, and slide out motors. Car fuses on this side over here going up and down. The first four or five of them are for lights. You have one for your radio, one for your LP detector one for your door side ignition, one for the bathroom, one for the bedroom, but they're marked from the top coming down. You can also see through the front of the breaker box, if one of the 12 volt fuses is blown, it will have a red light on the right hand side of it, indicating that the fuse is blown. The vent right beside that is for the furnace. In the bathroom area, You do have a light switch on the wall that turns the two lights above us on. You have a neural knob in the vent to crank the vent up and a black button that turns the fan on. It is also where your GFI outlet is that protects all the 110 outlets in the trailer. Your home shower is just like the shower in here. Hot water on the left hand side, cold water on the right. We also have air conditioning coming into the bathroom. We also have feet coming in behind the toilet. Now we'll step off into the bunk room. In the bunk room, there's a light switch on the wall to turn the lights on. There is a USB port, a 110 outlet, and another cable box for mounting a TV into the bunk room. Lights above the bunks have to be turned on by hand. This one here will actually fold up out of the way pins up so you can use the bottom one for a couch. Bunk in the back area here that does have a fire escape window. In the bunk area there is a ladder for climbing up to the top bunk on this side. In that top bunk there is also a light switch to turn the light above it on, a neural knob in the vent, and a fan in the bunk room. You also have the two air conditioner vents in the ceiling, and you have your heat register vent in the floor. Above the table, the light in the center, push the button in the center of it, turns it on and off. The tabletop comes off the two pedestals, goes between the two benches. The two back cushions come across the top of the table to make a smaller bed there. Here again, you have another light switch that turns the light on above this. And if I ain't mistaken, you do have a window big enough to be considered a fire escape window behind the couch. Here again, the two cushions, three cushions come off the back of it.
couch lifts up, two legs fold out, falls out into place. Back of the couch folds down to make the head of the bed. It also has a USB port beside the bed. Pretty good size storage space above the bed. does have a bigger remote for the TV. Should have got 29 channels on the TV. We'll also pull out and swivel by pulling on the cord here to the side. Releases the TV from the wall. TV will slide out, tilt from side to side. There is a 110 outlet in behind the TV and the power booster. The power booster has got the red light on indicating that the booster was working between the antenna on top of the trailer and the TV. If you hook up to satellite hookup on the outside of the trailer, you have to take your connection loose from where it says TV up to satellite. Not too bad. I'm going to slide that back in. Clicks into place. We'll play a DVD between your stereo and your TV. You just have to change your TV input settings up here in the upper left hand corner. It does have AM, FM, stereo. It has zones 1 and 2. 1 is inside of the auditorium. 2 is your two outside speakers. Now we'll go up into the bedroom. Before we go into the bedroom, I'm going to show you the thermostat on the wall. When you first turn it on, it gives you your fan speed. Low, high, cool, low, cool auto, and cool high. If you hit the mode button one more time, it brings you down to the heat. Hit it one more time, it brings you to where it says off in the right hand corner. There's one more thermostat on the wall in the bedroom. It is above the headboard of the bed. It controls the air conditioner in this room. The two lights above the headboard have to be turned on by hand. The bed will slide from side to side. It does have a fire escape window on the off door side of the trailer. The two air conditioner vents in the ceiling come from the air conditioner in the living room. When you close the cool, quick cool downs on the air conditioner in the bedroom, it sends it back through the same two vents back through the rest of the trailer too. I think it has a 110 outlet on either side of the bed. And on that side of the bed over there is the locking mechanism that makes the bed slide from side to side. Now it should slide from one side to the other. There's another place for a mounting for a TV on this area over here. Hooks to that, works off the antenna on top of the trailer or the park cable. And a 110 outlet to plug the TV into. That's about it for the bedroom. Oh, it does have heat in the floor. The register's in the floor in the bedrooms. That's basically everything on the trailer. It does have a working smoke detector. Any of the lights in the ceiling can be turned off by hand. The round vents in the ceiling are for the AC. The brown vents and floor vents in the floor are for the heat. That's basically everything on your trailer. Have a good day.